before the Colossus New Order and that one we try to forget comes Return to Castle Wolfenstein, the successor to the original Wolf 3D. Developed by Grey Matter Interactive, Wolfenstein is a solid shooter that holds up as being fun to play despite being about to hit its 18th birthday. The options haven't aged very well and these resolutions are questionable nowadays. After a little digging and a patch later, modern resolutions. I'll leave the links in the description. You play as BJ Blatzkowitz, captured by the Nazis while investigating Castle Wolfenstein, along with your partner, who is very, very dead. Unless you play on a console, but that's for the future. Graphically, the game is fairly strong for its time, but when it comes to big open areas, it drops off a cliff, mostly due to a lack of detail beyond just the grass. Later levels attempt to hide this by using fog, but this has an annoying side effect of making enemies that are practically invisible, but that can still shoot you very clearly. Interiors are where it's strongest, with some good detailing on the walls, most obvious in the crypts and churches. They're still quite spacious, but not too large that it's a bunch of void space. Except for this level. Every room is huge. Music isn't amazing, and mostly consists of the same few tracks on repeat the entire level. Sound effects are quite good with each weapon having a very distinct sound to it. The ambient noises and sound effects all work really well together, although there are some questionable moments. So what about the shooting? Well... I'm under attack! They have more anti tank weapons! Hurry! I can't take much more of this! Move! Gunplay and weapons are amazing. There's a reason the future games based their gameplay off of this. Every weapon, almost, is unique and feels different from every other gun. And while initially the weapons start fairly bland, by the halfway point you'll be running around with miniguns, flamethrowers, rockets, and the power of four. The venom can literally rip people into pieces.
You're carrying more weapons than this guy. You could be his great 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 grandfather or something. Sadly there is no shotgun. Google helped in explaining that one, but it's still saddening nonetheless when you can literally electrify people to death. Ammo is plentiful, and the sheer number of guns you carry makes it a non-issue. Ammo is also reset between missions, so saving it for the future is pretty pointless. If there was any place to nitpick, it would be about these three guns. They are mostly there just for show, as there's maybe two places you can get ammo for these the entire game. The Luger is instantly made obsolete by the MP40, and while you can stick a silencer on it, you get the silence then down the street. Hitboxes are a little... weird. Mostly with the scoped weapons, which have some sort of AoE to them? I'm completely missing this guy, and yeah, he's dead. Hit both of them with the same bullet? My guess is just aim assist to make the sniping easier, but it's very noticeable. Scoped weapons also have a sway meter to the side of them. Move too much and you'll throw off the scope and be stuck staring at your foe for a few seconds, lovingly locking eyes as he fills you with bullets. A few weapons can overheat, and reloading will lock you in the animation, unable to change weapon. Reloading in the middle of a firefight is a very bad idea. Health and armor are both static, needing medkits and armor packs to replenish. On higher difficulties, the amount of health given lowers pretty dramatically, making a difficult battle all the more harder. Stamina is also a thing, although less obviously, it's that green bar down there. You'd be perfectly okay if you forgot it, it exists, as you already run at light speed. Stamina is only used for sprinting and... jumping? But you can jump when it's empty. It's also overfilled by... drinking beer? I couldn't think of that one out. Enemies are fairly generic initially, consisting of just general soldiers and their officers. Shut your filthy hole, you slovenly swine. I don't know if this is amazing or terrible. The enemy cast begins to vary further in, adding in more specialist troops, undead, yes, undead, and these bloody things. There are a couple of bosses throughout, none of which have any kind of gimmick beyond shoot them to death. But they add a nice flavour to the game, creating some nice prolonged firefights that can be very tense on higher difficulties. AI is serviceable, if not great, mostly consisting of running towards you, shooting, and occasionally taking cover. Elite Guard have the smartest AI, well, I say smart. These women move fast and will do hit and runs and take cover, all while blasting you with accurate stem fire. Wait, isn't the Sten a British gun? Why are they... oh, okay then. The gunplay and slightly dumb AI then plays into the level design. Across seven missions, there's a great amount of variance in design and aesthetic. From the cold, dark halls of the castle, warmth of villages, creepy desolace of burial grounds, cold metallic labs, and ruined cities. Levels are mostly logical, although a few give very little direction as to where to go next. One of the biggest strengths is the possibility to do a great number of the levels using stealth. Stick with stealth and there's significantly less resistance, 
but you're stuck just using three guns. Two levels have mandatory stealth and it can be very annoying when you kill an enemy just for an alarm to vent sound because that other guy 3000 feet away glimpsed it. <laughs> Loud and Proud allows you to use your full arsenal and the levels cater to this throwing out more troops and modifying some levels in small ways that can really make a difference. Secret areas are also spread out across a large majority of the levels. Most of these contain fairly useless treasure items, unless you're on a console, but many lead into armories filled with delicious weaponry. Overall, the story is kind of everywhere, loosely joined together by singular events and the only interesting character being Death's Head. But it serves its purpose to ferry you around to a variety of locations. Most cutscenes are just shots of these two rooms from different angles. Suffice to say, huge amounts of effort weren't put into them. But one exception to this is the intro cutscene, which is fully rendered and looks really good for its time. Remember those consoles I mentioned earlier? Well, Wolfenstein was ported to the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, and both have some significant differences from a PC version from an additional starter mission, to co-op, and the capability to buy upgrades using the treasure from secret areas, and a whole host of other level changes. Due to my lack of consoles, I'm unable to tell you all of the differences from experience. Finally, there's the multiplayer. It's mostly dead. There are still a few servers up, but most are filled with bots. But at least the option is there to still play it, Using a simple class system and some customizable loadouts, I remember playing this when it was still somewhat active and it being a complete blast. Each side needing to progress through objectives one by one, usually attack and defend, but with a bit more flavour to it. And there we have it, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, a strong but aging shooter that while has its flaws, it's still really fun to play, whether it's for single player or the multiplayer.